Weather every 10 and sports twice an hour. News Talk KGBO. AM 1290 and now 101.5 FM. You're listening to Montana Morning with Peter Christian. A teenage boy is killed in a tragic accident on Highway 93. Good morning, everyone. It's Friday, April 17th, 2015. Right now we have 33 degrees under a mostly clear sky in western Montana. Our newscast this morning, sponsored by Boot Barn, celebrating everyday heroes who work hard for their families. Big savings on work apparel and boots with a location in South Crossing. Our top story this morning, a 13-year-old boy was killed at the intersection of Highway 93 South at Chief Looking Glass Road yesterday morning while he was a passenger in a vehicle on its way to school. I spoke with Montana Highway Patrol Trooper Phil Smart at the scene. He provided these details. The vehicle was trying to cross um, all five lanes of Highway 93 south of this location. Trying to cross from Chief Looking Glass, as you can see on one side, over to County Line Road on the other. And as it was doing so, it did have a stop sign, but it left uh, and tried to cross the road and was struck by a southbound vehicle. Smart says the young boy was the only fatality in the accident. One of the passengers in the vehicle that was crossing the road uh, was deceased, um, died at the scene. Uh, Other than that, all the passengers seemed to be in good shape. Um, Were transported to St. Patrick Hospital. The accident occurred in the height of rush hour traffic just before 8 a.m. Smart says the name of the victim is being withheld pending notification of his family. The accident still under investigation. A Colorado man is scheduled to be sentenced today for the murder of a Montana school teacher whose death highlighted the downsides of an oil boom that's brought thousands of newcomers to the remote northern plains. Prosecutors have recommended 100 years in prison for 25-year-old Michael Keith Spell of Parachute, Colorado, for the 2012 killing of Sherry Arnold. Defense attorneys want Spell sentenced to an institution for the mentally disabled. They say co-defendant Lester Van Waters threatened to kill Spell unless he went along with Waters' plan to kidnap a woman. The body of Arnold, a popular 43-year-old math teacher at Sydney High School, was found in a shallow grave near Williston, North Dakota. State of Montana is dealing with a rash of new sexually transmitted disease outbreaks. Montana Health Department Communicable Disease Department Bureau Chief Jim Murphy has been tracking the outbreak of gonorrhea, which appears to be part of a larger trend. If you look back just a couple years, like in 2012, for instance, we were hovering just slightly over 100 cases. This most recent year, 2014, we had over 400 cases. So it is increased by uh, you know, a significant percentage in the last few years. Statewide, there have already been 209 cases of gonorrhea diagnosed, nearly half of last year's total. Cindy Hotchkiss with the Missoula County Health Department says local numbers are telling the same story. Basically, in 2013, we had 21 total cases of gonorrhea reported to us. In 2014, we had 27. As of right now, um, you know, mid-April 2015, since January 1st, we've already had 20 cases in Missoula County. Uh, Cases of both syphilis and gonorrhea appear to be increasing, particularly among those between the ages of 20 and 50. Murphy says even with the increasing rate of gonorrhea, Montana's still below the national average. The largest and last of seven Montana tribal compacts is passed out of the state legislature and will soon move to the Congress for authorization. Senate Bill 262 received final approval on a vote of 53 to 47 in the House yesterday. Democrat Governor Steve Bullock has promised to sign it. After Congress ratifies the compact, which could take years, the CSKT Tribal Council must must then formally approve it. Finally, the Montana Water Court would review and enact the compact in a decree. Local authorities are on the lookout for a door-to-door meat salesman suspected of robbing a Frenchtown woman. Missoula County Sheriff's Department Public Information Officer Brenda Bassett reports the man was driving a white pickup truck with a sign that read Steak and Spokane. A man with uh, long brown shoulder-length hair come to her house. Um, He had gauged ears uh, about 5'10", late 20s, maybe early 30s, and asked if she wanted to buy meat, which is kind of odd. Um, and then when he, she said no, he kind of seemed annoyed, and then he left, and then later she discovered that her purse that had been in her unlocked car was taken. A credit card in the purse was later used to rack up purchases totaling over $1,300. She looked at the activity on the card and saw that there had been a number of charges, one close to the Montana-Idaho border, and then another in Idaho. And they purchased um, quite a hefty number of items from a Walmart superstore, including a flat-screen TV. 
Photos taken of the suspect at Walmart are available on our website at newstalkkgvo.com. Anyone with information about this this incident and this suspect asked to call Crime Stoppers 721-4444. State and U.S. officials say federal funding could be at stake as Common Core testing problems continue in Nevada, Montana, and North Dakota. The state's contract with the New Hampshire-based measured progress to administer the tests, which are linked to the hotly disputed federally-backed education standards. A coding issue back in March to cause delays and an ongoing server problem first stopped testing Tuesday. The trouble prompted Montana to offer school districts the option to opt out of the mandatory test this year. Missoula schools will continue to test. Prescribed burns will be taking place over the next week in the Bitterroot National Forest. Public Affairs Officer Todd McKay says the burn will begin in the West Fork District and the Sula District, and most importantly, people don't have to worry when they see the smoke. Beginning this afternoon, crews are going to uh, start a 70-acre burn uh, just west of the West Fork District office. So if folks do see smoke down there, um, you know, we just want to let them know that crews will be conducting some prescribed burns on the forest. McKay says the purpose of a prescribed burn is to make the forest more healthy, improve wildlife habitat, and prevent wildfires. Major benefits is it gets rid of some of that down fuel um, and and prevents uh, future um, high-intensity wildfires this summer when, of course, temperatures will be a lot warmer. So uh, many benefits, and uh, this is the time of year in western Montana that our fire crews can get out in the forest and do some good work before summer begins. The Forest Service wants to finish the burns quickly in hopes not to affect recreational and public activities that take place in the Bitterroot National Forest. Montana representatives have endorsed a proposal to increase interstate highway speed limits from 75 to 80 miles per hour. Senate Bill 375 by Republican Senator Scott Sales of Bozeman passed second reading on a vote of 54 to 46 in the House yesterday. The proposal would increase highway speed limits by five miles per hour at certain areas where the Montana Department of Transportation deems the speeds to be safe. It would also increase the maximum speeding fines from $100 to $200. And finally, two out of three judges on a federal appeals court panel are expressing doubts about a legal challenge to the Obama administration's far-reaching plan to address climate change. The U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit heard arguments yesterday in two cases challenging the EPA's proposal to cut heat-trapping pollution from the nation's coal-fired power plants. Judges Thomas Griffith and Brett Kavanaugh seem to agree with lawyers defending the EPA that the lawsuits are premature because the agency has not yet made the rule final. Our news talk time now, 612. It is going to be a very warm spring day across the Missoula Valley, a little warmer this morning. And as we get into the afternoon, we'll reach a high of right around 70 degrees in the valley. I'm meteorologist Matt Gray for KECI 13, your first alert station.